SpaceX is pushing aggressively towards Starship Flight 12, targeting as early as the first quarter of next year. The upper stage for this mission, Ship 39, was fully stacked more than a month ago and has been preparing for cryogenic proof testing since then. The reason that testing has not yet begun appears to be ongoing work at Massey's, where SpaceX has been pushing Test Tank 18 through an intensive structural test campaign. Test Tank 18 was built specifically to validate the design upgrades introduced with the next generation Block 3 ships, the first of which is Ship 39. Rather than risk discovering structural issues during Ship 39's own proof or static fire testing, SpaceX appears to have prioritized independent validation using the dedicated test article. Test Tank 18 completed two cryogenic test cycles, pushing it to extreme pressure and load conditions to characterize strain behavior, verify reinforcement performance, and establish failure margins. The tank is now being prepared for removal from the stand and transport back to the production site, indicating that testing is complete. The data gathered will directly feed into final design refinements on Ship 39. Once those updates are incorporated, Ship 39 is expected to proceed into its own cryogenic proof testing. On the booster side, Booster 19, Ship 39's flight partner, is being assembled inside Mega Bay 1. Last week, the liquid oxygen landing tank, which supplies oxidizer for the landing burn prior to tower catch, was moved into the bay for integration. Shortly after, the aft section was joined with the stacked barrel sections, completing the liquid oxygen tank structure. The first methane tank ring was moved on Tuesday night. Two more rings will complete the methane tank, after which it will be mated with the oxygen tank, finalizing the booster's primary structure. Booster 19 will then enter its standard qualification flow, beginning with cryogenic proof testing. The pace of Booster 19's assembly is unusually fast. For comparison, Booster 18's oxygen tank stacking took 128 days, while Booster 19's was completed in just 18 days, more than seven times faster. Following the Booster 18 explosion, SpaceX stated that the next Super Heavy would be fully stacked by the end of the month, followed by pre-launch testing. Current progress shows the program remains aligned with that plan, keeping Flight 12 on track for first quarter of next year, assuming no major setbacks. Progress is also accelerating at Pad 2. The orbital launch mount is largely complete, though scaffolding remains around the top deck as final outfitting continues. The major installation remaining is the set of protective access doors for the 20 booster hold down clamp arms designed to close immediately after clamp retraction at liftoff to shield internal mechanisms from plume, debris, and thermal loads. One door was installed approximately a week ago with no subsequent installations observed, indicating the work was likely a fit check with full installation expected to proceed after dimensional verification and minor design adjustments. Testing of the water deluge system has resumed after a multi-week pause with multiple high-pressure flow tests conducted over the past two weeks. These tests force water through the flame diverter, verifying flow rates, structural response, and spray coverage. The full flow activation, where both the flame diverter and top deck spray arrays operate together for thermal and acoustic suppression during super heavy ignition, will follow once the remaining launch mount work is complete. Pad 2's chopstick arms continue to receive upgrades. Several hydraulic actuators have been removed for replacement with higher capacity units, likely after earlier testing revealed limits in force output, response time, or dynamic damping. On the tower, the ship quick disconnect arm has been structurally integrated and connected to fluid and power lines. Its end section, which interfaces directly with the upper stage, is being outfitted at the production site with mounting hardware and connection mechanisms. The main quick disconnect interface is being assembled near the arm extension. This hardware may be pre-installed on the arm extension or integrated at the launch site after the extension is mated to the SQD arm. Once installed, the system will undergo end-to-end -end functional testing to prepare it for upper stage propellant loading operations. With installations nearing completion and final checkouts underway, Pad 2 is expected to become operational by January, with Booster 19's static fire serving as the first integrated test of both the booster's engines and the pad's infrastructure under real operational conditions. A short distance away, Pad 1 demolition continues. Following the removal of the launch mount legs several weeks ago, crews are dismantling the water-cooled steel plate that once sat beneath the OLM. Jackhammers, excavators, and cutting torches are being used to remove large sections of steel, along with surrounding concrete and rebar. 
dismantling of the water deluge system is also underway. Two of the seven water storage tanks have been removed, with crews now beginning dismantling work on the remaining tanks. These tanks are being transported to the port of Brownsville, likely for shipment to Kennedy Space Center for reuse. The high-pressure nitrogen tanks, which drive water flow from the reservoirs to the deluge system, are being removed sequentially. Associated water delivery piping is also being dismantled, starting with above-ground lines, before work moves to buried sections. The most labor-intensive phase ahead is deep foundation excavation to remove the load-bearing pile system beneath the pad, clearing the way for a new flame trench similar to Pad 2 and tailored for future Starship variants. At Massey's, recovery work following the Ship 36 incident delivered two key developments over the past week. The Ship Static Fire Test Stand, which has been undergoing repairs for several months, was moved away from the test site for the first time since the anomaly. This likely indicates that major structural repairs are largely complete, allowing teams to focus more fully on ongoing flame diverter repairs beneath the test stand position. At the same time, the methane tank farm, which was destroyed in the explosion and subsequently rebuilt, showed signs of activity for the first time since the incident. Extended venting was observed over several hours, indicating commissioning tests using inert liquid nitrogen. This testing is required before introducing flammable methane, allowing engineers to verify the integrity and performance of the methane storage tanks, pumps, heat exchangers, and associated systems under cryogenic conditions. Current progress suggests the site will be ready in time for Ship 39 static fire test. For much of the past decade, China's commercial launch sector closely followed SpaceX's Falcon 9 model. As SpaceX shifted its focus to Starship, a new wave of Chinese launch concepts has begun echoing that architecture, at least visually and conceptually. The latest example comes from Beijing leading rocket technology, which last Friday unveiled a vehicle it calls Starship One. Marketed as a fully reusable, AI-enhanced rocket, the company has released no verified technical specifications, including height, mass, payload capacity, engine type, propellant choice, or thrust. The announcement consisted solely of computer-generated renders and a stylized mission profile showing liftoff, ascent, payload deployment, and recovery of both stages. While the design closely resembles SpaceX's Starship, the company indicates that both stages would land propulsively on offshore barges rather than using tower catch recovery. Beijing leading rocket technology is not alone. In June, Chinese startup Astron Stone announced roughly $14 million in funding to develop its AS-1 launch vehicle, a Starship-inspired design. The company describes AS-1 as a fully reusable, two-stage stainless steel rocket, approximately 70 meters tall and 4.2 meters in diameter, powered by methane oxygen engines. The company has begun manufacturing a test version of the AS-1 upper stage and plans to conduct a static fire test along with a full-scale ground test of the chopstick recovery system. The chopstick system is now under construction, and its design is visually and operationally similar to Starship launch tower arms. Another entrant, Cosmoleap, drew attention last year after securing funding for its reusable launch vehicle known as Yuikion, or Leap. The design again follows a two-stage stainless steel methalox architecture, standing roughly 75 meters tall with a 4-meter diameter, and includes a tower-based mechanical recovery system for the first stage they have already constructed a fully functional catch tower and has conducted early recovery and drop tests focused on guidance and structural validation, but has not progressed to integrated hop tests or orbital demonstrations. Testing of the Methalox engine for the Leap rocket is also underway. The most consequential Starship-like shift, however, is happening at the state level. China's Long March 9, intended for lunar and deep space missions, has undergone a major redesign. Earlier concepts from the late 2010s depicted it as a fully expendable, three-stage heavy-lift rocket. Around 2023, following Starship's integrated flight tests and internal reassessments of cost and launch cadence, Chinese planners pivoted to a reusable, Starship-like two-stage architecture. The revised design is expected to stand about 114 meters tall with a 10.6-meter diameter, with both stages designed for propulsive recovery, incorporating aerodynamic control surfaces and grid fins. New methane oxygen engines in the 200-ton thrust class are currently under development to support the vehicle. Notably, most Chinese startups are pursuing scaled-down Starship-style vehicles rather than super-heavy lifters like Long March 9. 
this reflects practical constraints. Developing a true super heavy launcher requires industrial depth, capital, and infrastructure well beyond the reach of most startups. Overall, this trend reflects engineering pragmatism rather than coincidence. Starship has demonstrated a credible path to faster, lower cost access to orbit, and in a field governed by first principles physics, designs naturally converge when the leader, SpaceX, openly shares its progress. But execution is the real challenge. SpaceX spent years mastering engines, heat shields, and precision recovery, and many announced projects may never move beyond concepts. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA has lost contact with the MAVEN Mars Orbiter, and data from its final signal suggests the spacecraft began tumbling uncontrollably just before going silent. MAVEN, the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission, was launched in November 2013 aboard an Atlas V and entered Mars orbit in September 2014 after a 10-month cruise. Its mission was to measure how Mars is losing its atmosphere to space by studying the upper atmosphere, ionosphere, and solar wind interaction allowing scientists to measure present-day loss rates and reconstruct how the planet lost its once carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere that supported liquid water. Over more than 11 years of operations, MAVEN delivered major discoveries. It showed that atmospheric loss surges during solar storms, a process that likely drove Mars' transition from a potentially habitable world to today's thin, cold, and arid planet. The mission also observed widespread auroras across Mars, produced by interactions between the solar wind, the upper atmosphere, and localized crustal magnetic fields. MAVEN also studied Mars' twisted magnetic field, global dust storms, mapped Martian wind patterns, and seasonal ozone layer formation. The spacecraft also measured how solar storms can temporarily double surface radiation levels, directly informing spacecraft design, mission planning, and radiation shielding for future human exploration. That scientific legacy is now in question, following a loss of signal on December 6th. At the time, MAVEN was operating in its normal elliptical orbit, ranging from roughly 180 to 4,500 kilometers, and passed behind Mars in a routine occultation. When the spacecraft was expected to re-emerge and re-establish contact with NASA's deep space network, no signal returned. Telemetry before the event confirmed that all spacecraft systems were operating normally, yet contact was never restored. NASA immediately began recovery efforts, transmitting commands and listening for any response. On December 15th, the agency confirmed that a short fragment of tracking data from December 6th, recorded during a radio science experiment, showed MAVEN was tumbling and that its orbit had shifted slightly but measurably, strongly indicating a loss of attitude control. The root cause remains under investigation, with a leading possibility being a fault in the spacecraft's inertial measurement units, which could cause the spacecraft to misjudge its attitude and apply incorrect control inputs, leading to uncontrolled rotation. Despite the seriousness of the anomaly, recovery remains possible. MAVEN still had enough propellant to operate into the late 2030s, and its design includes fault protection and safe mode systems intended to stabilize orientation. However, permanent loss remains a real risk, given the spacecraft's age and the complexity of the failure, even as recovery efforts continue. A Chinese commercial satellite recently passed dangerously close to an operational Starlink spacecraft in low Earth orbit, drawing criticism from SpaceX over the lack of pre-launch coordination and orbital data sharing. The incident followed a December 10th launch by Chinese firm CAS Space, which flew its Kinetica-1 solid fuel rocket from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The mission deployed nine satellites, including six Chinese multifunctional spacecraft, an Earth observation satellite for the UAE, a scientific satellite for Egypt, and an educational satellite for Nepal. All were inserted into low Earth orbit at roughly 560 kilometers, a region already crowded with active satellite constellations. Within 48 hours of deployment, one of the newly launched spacecraft made a close approach to Starlink 6079, an operational SpaceX satellite launched in March 2023. The satellite operates in a near-circular orbit at about 566 kilometers, with an inclination of roughly 43 degrees. The Chinese satellite's deployment orbit closely matched this regime, placing both spacecraft on intersecting trajectories. Michael Nichols, SPACE's Vice President of Starlink Engineering, stated that the satellites passed within approximately 200 meters of each other, at an altitude near 560 kilometers, attributing the near-miss to a failure in pre-launch coordination.
He explained that when operators do not share ephemeris data, precise orbital position and velocity information, the risk of close approaches rises sharply. As far as the Starlink team is aware, no coordination or deconfliction was conducted with satellites already on orbit prior to the launch, eliminating opportunities to adjust launch timing or initial deployment trajectories that could have avoided the conjunction. Nichols emphasized that most orbital collision risk stems from insufficient communication between operators, warning that long-term access to space depends on improved data sharing and coordination. Such near misses are dangerous because collisions at orbital speeds exceeding 28,000 km per hour can generate large debris clouds, threatening nearby spacecraft, including the International Space Station. This is why operators must share orbital data and conduct conjunction analyses before launch, allowing conflicts to be identified early. Without consistent coordination, collisions risk adding to the millions of track debris objects already in orbit, potentially rendering key orbital regions unusable. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.